Are we actually going to leave tomorrow? At this stage, yes, we are. Provided Janet turns on in the morning without the belt slipping and no fuel leaks, which is what's been happening the last little bit, we'll be leaving tomorrow. Doing it, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> we said goodbye to Puerto Madero. I got a little bit sad. Um, yeah, we're off. Mixture of nervousness and excitement and sadness and happiness, but we're ready. We're really ready to get going. That big boy will go out, I think. Traffic too, jam? Yeah, I'm too scared to cut in front of them in case they're, they're a big boat, so we'll let them go first. Well, so far we're about been about two and a half, three hours since we've left. Two and a half hours. And other than getting stuck behind the dredging boat, it's been very uneventful. Uh, we're not really sailing right now. We've got the mainsail up just to keep us comfortable in the swell. The wind's just now picking up, so maybe we'll be able to sail, but we're kind of on a time limit. We're trying to get past the Tawana pecks in the window that we have, so we're kind of not dawdling. The route from Puerto Madero to Otulco takes you directly through the path of the notorious Tuanapec winds. A Tuanapec gale, known as a tea pecker, has long held a place in sailing lore alongside the Kraken and the Bermuda Triangle. Weather systems in the Gulf of Mexico funnel across the isthmus, causing extreme wind conditions which can blow sailors out to sea or even worse, wreck ships. Crossing the Gulf of the Tuanapec involves a lot of waiting. A minimum three-day window between gales is needed to make it safely to Ultulco. Once your window arrives, there are two options. The first is the direct route straight across. It's a bit faster, but if the weather predictions are wrong, you might find yourself dealing with high seas and 80 knot winds with nowhere to hide. The second route, which we chose, was the one foot on the sand option, hugging the coast all the way from Puerto Madero to Ultulco. So unless we can sail at least four knots, we're going to be motoring and then yeah, we'll go from there. So yeah, nice calm day though. if we mentioned that um, our autopilot's broken so we shall be hand steering the whole way 250 nautical miles <laughs> but we have this which is our um, our broken autopilot but you can still use it to position the tiller which is nice We had the perfect first day. Everything had gone well until around now. So the first night of sailing started off a bit rough because I got seasick around 
5, 6 p.m. for the first time and then continued to feel sick. Um, and then around, it was probably around 4 in the morning or maybe 3 in the morning, there was a really funny sound and then the boat really slowed down and like the engine kind of went like Whoa, and then kind of went back to normal and so I assumed that we must have ran over a fishing net so I you know put it into neutral and then slowly sped up again everything seemed fine and then an hour later maybe around 4 a.m. it happened again and I was like oh another fishing net I don't know something weirds going on and then as soon as I put it back into gear it happened again so I decided to just turn the engine off because we couldn't really see anything at that point it was dark um, and decided to just go without the motor for a little while until the morning um, and really the only really nice thing that happened was after we made that decision uh, we had dolphins come to the boat and we couldn't see the dolphins because it was so dark but there was bioluminescence so you could just see all of them moving through the water all around the boat and it was funny because I remember thinking at the time that normally I would have thought that was like a positive omen, a good sign, but for some reason I just felt like they were telling us to turn back. Well, we've both been throwing up all night. And it seems there's a problem with the transmission. So now we can't use the engine and there's almost no wind. So we're 90 miles from where we left, 150 miles to go, but we've opted to turn back since we can haul out at least in Tapatula and maybe get towed as we get closer. So yeah, we'll see. So we had to wait until the morning before we could really take a look at the engine because our assumption was that something was wrapped around the propeller. That was our hope. So as soon as there was sun up and we could see in the water, we dove in, both of us checked the propeller, both of us checked it was spinning freely and there was nothing there. It was completely fine. So then I went through some transmission checks. We could basically tell from the noise, there was like a slight click coming from the gearbox. So we kind of knew it was most likely a transmission problem but you could spin the, the shaft and transmission fine, the propeller was spinning outside the boat fine by hand, um, all of the cables that speed the boat up and slow it down, put it into neutral, reverse and forward, all seemed okay. The lever itself was moving fine, our throttle um, when the engine wasn't turned on. I ended up changing the transmission oil just in case um, and Basically, no matter what we did, after some time the noise came back and the engine would almost stall and it sounded really, really horrible. And after reading through Nigel Kelder's diesel mechanic book a bunch, it more or less sounded like something we were going to need a mechanic to fix. And so, yeah, we kind of knew there was nothing we could do about it. Yeah, so it was kind of at that point after doing all those tests and trying everything we could with the engine, we kind of knew our only option was to turn around, turn around and go back. Uh, we've been adrift most of the morning. Uh, there's very minimal wind. So we have the sails up and we're just trying to use whatever we got to get a little closer to shore in the hopes of maybe running into a panga that can possibly tow us, or maybe yeah, get someone on the VHF, something. Um, right now there's really not enough wind to do anything, and uh, yeah, we're going. We're going. When, we, when we get a gust, it's like three knots. Right. Yeah, the problem is we're not going in any direction that we need to go. We just keep tacking like up and down the coast without going anywhere. Yeah. Which makes it hard. So, we will see what happens. No regrets about having to turn back. It was really the only option that made any sense. Like, we had, we knew if we came back to Puerto Madero, we 
we know the place and we know that we can basically fix any problem that would present itself. And if we kept going, you just you just don't know. We haven't been there. So no regrets about turning back. The only real regret I had is not taking the GoPro with me when I jumped in the water to look at the prop because it really was beautiful. You could see as deep as possible in all directions, just totally clear blue water. But um, at that point in the morning, I was like really seasick still and just was trying not to throw up. And the last thing I wanted to do was anything else other than trying to figure out what was wrong with the, the prop. And so didn't even cross my mind to bring the, the GoPro down with me. But looking back on it, that would have been pretty cool. motor is currently going as long as we keep it at a very low RPM. Um, so we're just kind of creeping our way up the coast. So far we haven't been able to reach anybody on a radio or the cell phone because we're not getting any service and the radio is um, too far away. But yeah, plan for now is just to creep up the coast for as long as we can with the motor and then sailing when we have wind and go from there. Probably take days to get there. Running the engine at a low RPM only worked for about an hour before it would stall, so we were really just using it to prevent ourselves from drifting backwards. Well, I just had a long nap. And we're both feeling a little better. Um, nobody's vomited since 5 a.m. this morning, so that's a good sign. <laughs> it's almost 3 p.m., so that's good. Um, and we actually have some decent wind on a nice um, kind of beam reach here. So, yeah, we're actually making some time now, which is really nice. Um, Jim's been driving, and yeah, all in all, it's been pretty calm, hasn't it? So hopefully with any, yeah, with any luck, we'll be able to keep doing this for the rest of the afternoon and maybe a little bit into the evening. And then there may be a fishing boat that might be coming nearby to where we are by tomorrow morning, in which case we may be able to get a little hitch a ride back as well if there's not much wind in the morning. But we'll just see how it goes. Poco poco. We're going two and a half knots. Down the waves. <laughs> Will they make it back? Will the wind ever pick up? Will Dr. Shetty stop vomiting? Find out soon in part two. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, you can help us sail and save animals by becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month for lots of extras, including live updates. Until next time, stay chuffed, everybody.